Hello guys, welcome back to Tabletop Corner. Today I'm just powering through some more of the sheer amount of Doctor Who miniature stuff that me and my dad got each other from the Warlord Games Black Friday sale for Christmas. Today I'm going to look at the 1st, 4th and 10th Doctors and 5th, 11th and 12th Doctors uh, expansion packs. Buy both of these from Warlord Games, you get them uh, like together as a pack, you get them a slight discount and get a special surprise, which we're going to save for the end of the video. So first of all I'm going to look at 5th, 11th and 12th Doctors because I just, I think these are the less interesting ones. You can see the miniatures painted on the back there. And they look pretty cool. So let's get into this. Okay, so we've got the plastic off. And now we're just going to carefully pop the box open. <clears throat> I love these little tiny like dinky sort of expansion boxes that they put in some of the smaller expansions. They're rather nice. Very easy to store as well. Let's just uh, reach in there and dig it out. Oh! Okay, that's interesting. I didn't realise this. You do actually get the cards with these expansions. Okay, I didn't realise that. I thought you... Honestly, because the cards are online, you can get these cards on the... You can get PDFs of these cards on the Warlord Games website. I didn't think it came with the cards. So, that's interesting. So, you do get the cards. So, that's good. What I have done, however, is I've already filmed me talking about the cards from the Warlord Games PDFs, so we'll go through those there still, and then we'll have a look at the miniatures. So this was packed for us by... It's packed for us by Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie, for packing these for us. And you'll notice these are plastic miniatures with the base already attached, which is interesting. Might have to refocus the camera to get a good look at these guys though so there is the fifth doctor um camera's still struggling to get a good look at him though but yeah if i hold him there it sort of looks good enough then we have the 11th doctor in the middle And finally, we have the 12th Doctor on the end. Uh, this is the second 12th Doctor figure. I probably won't use this one much because I already have the 12th Doctor expansion, which has him in pewter. So I probably won't be bothering with this one too much. But I'll probably use it to experiment with painting, etc. Now we'll look at the 1st, 4th and 10th Doctor's packs. Um, arguably three of, well definitely three of the most important Doctors there is. Uh, arguably three of the best, arguably the three best, who knows. We'll pop these open now. Oh, just realised there's a little, uh, there's actually a little hole in it, in the plastic already on the side here. So, never mind. Um, okay. So again, lovely little dinky box with the three of them in it. Um, we'll pop that box open. And inside here, again we've got the card packs that I didn't realise you got with these. And the miniatures in this little Gallifreyan box. Uh, again, this room was packed by Ronnie. So, first of all we have the first Doctor. Which is a very interesting looking mini. Then we have the fourth Doctor, which is quite possibly my favourite sculpt of the Doctor in this game. Um, I think it's just got a lot more character to it than the others. I mean, the Matt Smith one's pretty good as well. And they all do a good job of capturing the likeness of that Doctor, but I feel like this, this one is just, uh, you know, there's a lot more going on. And then finally we have the 10th Doctor. Again, this is a duplicate. We already have the 10th Doctor expansion, so again, it'll probably just be used to practice painting and whatnot. Uh, obviously, if you want to go for different looks of that Doctor, you can do so if you end up with multiples, so that's cool. So, there you go. There's the, the six Doctors from each of the three Doctors expansions. But, what would any Doctor be without their faithful companions? So, today's extra content is the K9 miniature that you get if you order this these double expansions 
of Warlord Games. Bit of a funny story about K9. Me and my family always do our own crackers for Christmas dinner. So we're always looking for a small gift for each other to put in the cracker. Mine, mine was the K9 and what we quite often do after Christmas dinner is just leave everything on the table. And what must have happened is K9 must have got stuck to a, a bit of wrapping paper. Like the sellotape on a bit of wrapping paper and got thrown in the recycling. So the next day, on Boxing Day, I was trying to find him and I was looking everywhere. And obviously he's a very small thing to find, to go missing. And uh, couldn't find him anywhere. So eventually, so not, not after too long actually, we started looking through the recycling. We found him quite quickly then. But uh, yeah, that was a very worrying thing. Because the thing is, if uh, if someone else hadn't mentioned the fact that he might have gone in the recycling, I probably never would have looked, or at least I would have looked there very last after searching high and low for ages. And you can't get this except for with these expansions. So, you know, it was uh, really not one to lose. But yeah, K9 is really cool. Um, he's probably, probably my favorite Doctor Who character, rivaled only by Wilf. Because I like cute robots. And uh, yeah, the, as, I'll get into the K9's card in a bit. Uh, that is one I'm going to have to print off. But yeah, he's pretty cool. So yeah. Okay, so as it's turned out, after discovering the cards in the boxes and seeing I'd already recorded this part where I was going to talk through the cards in their PDF format, turns out OBS Studio didn't save the video of me doing so. I don't really know why I expect it to do anything successfully anymore. Um... So I'm going to do it again anyway, so I may as well have just done it while I was doing the opening. But I digress. Let's get on with it. Uh, the first one here is the First Doctor. He has got 6 movement, 4 resilience, plus 1 melee dice, 0 shooting dice. He comes with 2 fate tokens, and he is unique. He has wounds too, all hope is lost, and tough, which is quite common for the Doctor. We're going to talk through um, just the all hope is lost and tough abilities. All hope is lost once per game. A faction with one or more characters with this trait can exchange all its combat cards for the same number of fate markers. Now this was really helpful in my last game in which I used the 10th Doctor to trade in all my combat cards for fate markers. And um, that allowed me to recover figures that otherwise would have died, would have cost me the game. In fact it was the Doctor himself I believe who was shocked. He would have been instantly killed if he was meleeed, but I managed to trade everything in for fate markers and recover him, so that worked out. He's also got tough, which means he can't be shocked by shooting attacks, which is also going to help out very much, because it means the Doctor is going to have more legs to him, which is always nice. However, it does mean he doesn't really have a particular thing that he is doing for the team, apart from being really good at shooting. Um, I'm going to look at the backs of these cards second, uh, just because there's not really much variation on what's on them, so we'll go through those um, after I've been through all of the fronts. So, the fourth Doctor is exactly the same, except instead of Tough, he has Maverick, which allows him to expend a Fate Marker to make a second move in either the movement or the shooting subphase. Now, that doesn't feel like it's an unbelievable ability. Um, generally, it kind of feels like he's probably just going to end up miles away from everyone else, which, to be honest, if you're playing Doctor and Companions, it feels like you probably want to keep them together. But, I don't know, maybe there's some use for this. And finally, we have the 10th Doctor. He's the exact same again, except he has plus one to his shooting dice. And he doesn't have an extra ability, as you can see, just as unique wounds to and all hope is lost. What is interesting, though, is there is a different 10th Doctor card. And I believe that is an, uh, I believe that is a errata to this, which perhaps was a bit of an underpowered version. So that he now has Bodyguard... Uh, it's not included in the cards, so we don't have it to talk about here at hand right now. Uh, looking at the backs of the cards, we can see that each of them has a sonic screwdriver, except for the first Doctor, who has a hypnotic ring instead. Either weapon is a six range, four shooting dice, or close combat with four melee dice, and it is limited to shocked, which means you cannot uh, exterminate someone with the attack, which is very fair for the Doctor, really. He doesn't want to kill anyone. He's definitely capable at what he does. Next, we're going to be looking at the 5th, 11th, and 12th Doctors, which I probably should have done first, to be honest with you, but I digress. The 5th Doctor comes in 6, 4, plus 1, plus 1, two fate markers again, unique, wounds 2, all hope is lost, but this Doctor comes in with Brave as his unique ability. Brave allows him, during the upkeep, uh, to remove an under fire marker on a score of a jacket or a surge. Now, in my last game, I went 
six turns. In six turns, I removed two under fire markers. So that's probably a very helpful ability. Never underestimate the uh, uh, the ability of removing under fire markers. It kind of sounds like it's not going to be that important, but it really is. Honestly, under fire markers are one of my least favorite parts of this game. I, it is possible to just be completely stunned and just be unable to play the game because of the under fire markers. But yeah, uh, the 11th Doctor again, 6, 4, plus 1, plus 1, plus 2 of Fate Tokens, unique, wounds 2, all hope is lost, and hard to hit, which uh, gives all characters that shoot towards him a minus 1 combat dice penalty, which is very helpful, because the Doctor's going to have a huge target on his back, making him a little bit harder to hit, or harder to shock is going to be great, so 11th Doctor and 1st Doctor are very good in that respect. Next we have the 12th Doctor, who... In his original incarnation really sucked because with his, the sonic sunglasses were meant to originally just be a melee weapon or a shooting weapon i can't remember which i think it was melee and uh, when he compared that to the sonic screwdriver that could do both it was completely un in incomparable or it turns out the original sonic screwdriver was uh, ranged and sunglasses was melee and then the screwdriver was a to do both whereas the sunglasses i don't think ever were so yeah the 12th doctor was terrible but you can give him the screwdriver instead i think one of the things that's missing from all of these is the ability to have a intake uh, to have a sonic device attached to them because they have it included with a card uh, whereas others have my stuff ability but anyway the 12th doctor is 640 plus one fate mark fate mark unique wounds to all hope is lost and bodyguard which as you may assume basically allows him to take hits that are rolled on the damage table to himself so essentially how i believe it works is that when you get to a point where you've made your attack you've hit and you're about to roll the dice on the damage table instead of rolling the dice against uh, the character you were originally targeting you then tie you then roll the damage against doctor instead as you can see again all of them have a sonic screwdriver included including the uh the Dwarf Doctor. So we'll go through the adventure cards here. To be honest with you, I forgot about them for a second there. Uh, so first of all, we'll go through the fifth Doctor's adventure card. This is called Braveheart. Discard this card to immediately remove all underfire tokens from any companions in the game. Like I say, don't underestimate how useful that can be. It's possibly not as good as some of these other cards are, but it is still going to be a very helpful card. 11th Doctor's unique card is it's a Fez or a Fez now. Fez is a cool. Discard this card to cause all enemy sh uh, special characters in the line of sight to the Doctor to become immediately shocked. And that is, of course, going to mean that if you do this before your melee phase, anyone who you shock that way is then going to be a free exterminate, which will probably make your melee phase a lot more um, productive. And the 12th Doctor's unique card is Attack Eyebrows. You discard this card to automatically place two under fire tokens on all enemy non-special characters within six inches of the Doctor. So that, again, is quite substantial. Don't underestimate how helpful those under fire markers could be, especially when you get two of them. It's going to take at least two turns to get rid of them. Even then, you're probably not going to get rid of all of them anytime soon. So this could really, really stumble your opponent's uh, team up. Okay, so back to the original pack. The first Doctor's unique card is Eloquent Speech. Discard this card at the beginning of any turn. All non-special characters that begin the turn within 8 inches of the Doctor may not move, shoot, or engage during that entire turn. They may, however, defend themselves in melee combat. Now, what's interesting about this is you can tag this with a Doctor unique adventure card which allows you to take an additional turn this will essentially allow you to have two free turns uh, of course anything that's further away from eight inches and the doctor is still going to be able to move but that's very unlikely if you play this very late on in the game so it's a, it's a it's a good card it's it's a really good card that next we have would you like a jelly baby for the fourth doctor you can discard this card and select one enemy non-special character within six inches of the doctor that character immediately joins the doctor's faction until the end of the game so he can just mind control a guy and just take him for the rest of the game he's limited to only doing non-special characters which is a bit of a shame but it does mean that you know you're going to be able to get a free guy for this adventure card and that's you know that's really good it's arguably better mind control than the master has and finally, the David Tennant, the 10th Doctor's unique adventure card. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Discard this card to transform any two shocked results caused this turn into exterminate. It's really good to have the exterminate card, uh, to have the ability to just turn shocked into exterminate um, whenever you need it because it can be quite difficult to turn shocks into exterminates and to kill people off 
in this game it can take quite a while to hit them especially if both players are playing uh, special character style teams so this card can be very helpful then uh, i did play this card the last time i played the game with the 10th doctor I didn't actually use it because I wanted to make sure I got the two exterminates and then in the end I didn't actually use it at all. Won the game without it in the end, but it's nice to have the option of just killing things straight off. And from there we'll go into our faithful robot companion, K9. He has got four movement, four resilience, plus two melee dice and plus two shooting dice and we'll get into that in a second. He's got unique, wounds two, scientific genius, hard to hit and good dog. Now we've got hard to hit, we already explained with the 11th doctor, but the other two are explained on the back of the card so we'll get into that now so his abilities scientific genius if k9 picks up a vortex node the value on the back represents how many victory points that node is worth if transferred to or picked up by another character that value reverts to one vp and good dog is if k9 is within six inches of the doctor or a companion any wound scored against them can be transferred to k9 instead as you can see from the top of the page, he's also got some incredible weaponry with a six range laser scalpel that gives him five shooting dice, uh, which is obscene because it means with the two he already has, that's going to be seven. He also has restraint, which means he can't exterminate anyone with a shot. Energy, which means he also hits on surges and integral, which just means he can't drop the weapon. And secondly, he has a muzzle mounted shock wand that was hard to say uh, as a melee option which again gives him plus five dice this gives him shock which is just like energy for the uh, for the ranged weapons it lets you hit with surges uh, and in this instance it doesn't have restraints so, so you can't exterminate people with that basically either way that k9 is fighting he's attacking with seven dice and whether he can exterminate you or not he is a pretty substantial fighter and the thing that makes him all the more substantial is his unique adventure card, which is K9 Whistle. This adventure card allows the Doctor to include K9 in his faction. The K9 recruitment card does not count towards the faction's total. This adventure card can never be discarded and can always and always counts towards your active adventure card total. Now what's good about that, of course, which is pretty obvious, is that K9 can be included in any team with a Doctor on it for the sake of one adventure card. And let me tell you, who is, he is way worth it. If nothing else than just for an extra bodyguard for the Doctor with Wounds 2 and his good dog ability, he is incredibly good at just fighting people and taking people on of the lot i think k9 is the standout piece here but obviously you've got to have a doctor to play him with and you know there is a good selection with these two boxes for the for the lot of them as i say do look out for any possible potential card erratas i believe the 10th doctor and the 12th doctor have definitely been errated since these boxes came out some of the erratas and stuff in this game are a little bit hard to keep up with but you know should be easy enough to work out once you start uh, getting into the game. So again, if you'd like to look at these sets, you can buy these two sets with the K9 miniature from Warlord Games for $23.99. And Warlord Games do uh, do periodically do good sales on their website, including uh, three for two sales, which is where me and my dad got all this um, Doctor Who content. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it and goodbye.